Hey everybody and welcome to a Tatter of Fact here at the Girls Inc. studio in Las Vegas and I got Kat back here with me today. Oh, hi sweetheart. <laughs> Where you been? I was homesick with COVID. <laughs> yes, you were. Mm -hmm. you, and this is the first time you got COVID. Yes. You escaped it all this time. I got it in 2020. Yes. Maybe oh uh, what was it like september or october or something like that i don't know how i didn't get it because i think we made out and everything and i didn't get covid <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know we probably did make out and <laughs> yeah and you didn't get it but we did separate you know we we, we stayed yes. separated and you know you didn't want to <laughs> no i mean you know but we did mm -hmm. and you didn't get it and we've gone the next last couple of years healthy yeah. didn't get it people around us got it everybody mm -hmm. around yeah. us got it yeah. right didn't get it. and you just got it for the first time mm -hmm. last month i know yeah i got it pretty bad yeah it, you did you got it and i didn't i didn't get it but i i kicked you out uh -huh. we put you in the casita <laughs> <laughs> your dad's house <laughs> my dad's my dad's house and and all the dogs the dogs wanted to be with you um i don't know why because you're well because you're mama yeah so you went in the casita with the dogs and yeah and i and i i didn't get it so thank gosh but you got it pretty when i got covid like in 2020 it was like a really bad head cold mm -hmm. like you know I, just, I felt like crap you know i was on the couch for a few days and I was coughing and sneezing, but I didn't get a fever. I didn't get the temperature. No. And I didn't have any residual anything. No, uh -uh. And it was, I, I would, you did know. Did you even lose your sm taste and smell? I, I did not remember. lose my taste and smell, no. Mm -hmm. And I think it was really just like a really bad, nasty head cold. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what, what, what it was like. Um, but you just got it. And it was, it was a little, it was a little scary for me. Yeah, it was a little, you got it bad. I know. You got a fever of what, 104? Almost 105. Yeah, 104 point something. Uh -huh. 104 point six, I think what it was. Yeah. And we were texting with our doctor. And that aspirin wasn't taking it down that far. No, yeah. and you had that fever for f like five days. Mm -hmm. That high, that's high. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know. And Dr. Dr. Burt, we were, you know, she was texting and if it hit 105, I had to take it to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. And thank God it didn't. But yeah, you got it bad. I mean, you were you were sprawled out. <laughs> I mean, you were bad. Yeah, I didn't even really watch a lot of TV because I didn't feel very good. I slept a lot. Yeah, you slept a lot, and oh. and you did and you did lose your taste. No, I lost my smell. You lost your smell. That's right. You lost but your not smell. my taste. But not your taste. Right. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. How, and but you got everything back. Uh huh. Yeah. You're fine. Yep. No residuals. No. All right. So it's good to have you back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd starve. I missed you. <laughs> I would starve. I don't cook. You do mm. all the cooking in the house, so it's great. You made a great salad last night. Oh. Great Caesar salad. Thank, thank you. you. That was delicious. So that little pizza thing. That was so good. So yeah. So um, and last week we went to San Diego. Oh, we had a blast. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were we were supposed to do a little vacation back to Maine and see my dad and my family and everything, but um, you know he he had a medical situation, so I had to f I had to get on on a flight and and get there really really quick and spend uh, a week there uh, prior to our vacation. Mm -hmm. you know, I, had to, I had to go early, and and he's okay and everything, so that's all good. But so we ended up really not like a vacation vacation. No. So we decided to do a little three day trip down to San Diego. And that was great. The weather was great. We got to walk on the beach and go to the zoo. We went to the zoo. I posted that turtle picture, uh -huh. that little that video. video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was like 157 years old. It was amazing. It was amazing. And how amazing was it to like rub her neck? Yeah. She loved it. She loved it. It was uh -huh. like, oh don't <laughs> stop she would stop chewing the minute you started rubbing her neck she would like stop chewing lettuce 
right? And she yeah. would just like roll her eyes in the back of her head and stretch her neck out and like further, yeah, further, like more, more. It was so cute. It was so cute. And then, and we saw two turtles in the background. I was going to say, did you talk about the funny part in your little uh, video? No, no, I did not talk about the funny part. But there were two, tur- and these these turtles are big. I mean, they're huge. They're they're tortoises. They're tort. They're from. They're Galapagos turtles. Galap- Galapagos. Galapagos turtles. Uh-huh. And so they're huge. Uh-huh. And there were two turtles off in the distance a little bit. <laughs> and at first I looked and I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> it couldn't be. And, and then we asked our the the uh, tour guide, are they? Are they doing it? And she's like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're having sex." Yeah, but, but giving a demonstration of the noise. <laughs> well, I'm not going to demonstrate the noise, <laughs> but it was it's hysterical. It's hysterical, but and it's loud. Yeah, I'm on it like a mic. It won't. It was really loud, but it was this deep baritone, like groan kind of thing mm-hmm. that was really loud that you would never. Well, first of all. I think you can hear it in the I video. I mean, of course, turtles have sex, right? Because right. right. how, how do, you know. To make baby turtles. You got to make baby turtles. Uh, they come out of eggs, right? So, of course, they're having sex. But you never think of turtles, <laughs> like, being sexual, let alone enjoying it so much that, like, they release these sexual groans and noises, right? Yeah, I guess the, the tour guide said that they do it so loud sometimes you could hear it they were more towards the middle of the park you could hear it all the way into the entrance of the yeah. park <laughs> yeah that's the, she did say that it was hysterical, was hysterical. Uh, yeah it was hysterical so uh, and and they didn't you know they didn't stop they they didn't mind an audience mm-hmm. they just they just kept right at it cigarettes were right there waiting C- yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was funny it was uh, so yeah so that was great it was great and we moved into a new studio well we 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 took on we didn't move into a new studio but we took on added space an mm-hmm. additional studio we got all our products up here now yep everything's all together now all together now we we did have our products um in a fulfillment center for quite some time and then we moved them um into a, a small space yeah. and brought yeah. scott on mm-hmm. to be our shipping manager that's ashley's husband and our only boy so far. Our only boy so far, and uh, yeah, but it was. But the products were still off site. Right. So finally, for the first time since we launched the Girls Inc. store like 11, 12 years ago, mm-hmm. we have our products right here on site. So I, I'm digging it. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, mm. it's great. So I'm really excited about that. That should that should spark or inspire some good reels <laughs> 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 with that product there. Um, yeah okay so anything else new going on no no what did we just figure out about how many years we've been together well Mm -hmm. that's funny that is funny so i well we we just celebrated what we thought was 17 years in may Mm -hmm. and the year before that we celebrated 16 years and the year before that 15 years and then the year before that 14 years and so on so on and (laughs) so on and so on uh but somewhere along the way we got tripped up and <laughs> we like we shorted ourselves a year so i think it was between the 11th and 12th year i think we like <laughs> had our 12 year anniversary and you know and we're all excited it's great and the next year i think we celebrated the 12 year anniversary uh-huh. again <laughs> Right? Twice, right? I think we celebrated the 12 year anniversary. I don't know how you twice. remember that. Well, I, I was going back. I'm thinking back, and I think it was year 12. We 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 totally fucked up, and we celebrated <laughs> it twice, uh-huh. two years in a row. So what we discovered is this past May was not really our 17 year anniversary. It was our 18 year anniversary. Right. Yeah. So 20 is coming sooner. So <laughs> 20 is 20 is coming sooner than what we thought. Mm-hmm. And the 20 is a big one. You got to do something, you know, you got to do something big. Yeah. Yeah. So really big. Yeah. So happy 18 years. <laughs> happy honey. 18 years to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get down to uh, what we're going to talk about today. So we had um, an email. We've been asking Willow and. Um, I think it's. Uh, um, I think it might have come in on an email. Uh, this this particular question, but we had someone ask us 
uh, or me in particular, um, if I had any advice mm-hmm. to give her on, you know, for, for having um, a, a long, healthy career, mm-hmm. and then, it was like a two-part question, then um, she saw me speak like back in 2007 or 2008, and she's following me now on Instagram. So then she asked me if, how, what did I do, or is there anything in particular I did uh, give her any advice on how to stay relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not just have a long career, but staying relevant. So I thought that was a really b- good question. I've, I've been thinking about that for the the last uh, several days. And I mean, there's a lot to that answer. I mean, there's a lot. You're talking, I've been doing this 22 years. So it's 22 years of, mm-hmm. <laughs> you Relevancy. know. Relevancy. Yeah. And um and, and footage and, and history where, where that I could pull from. So I could probably talk about this for a week. But we, we did a little outline mm-hmm. and talk about some of, the, some of the stuff that, you know, came to us rather quickly on, on what is probably the most important things, mm-hmm. at, at least that I have done, right. you know, to, I'm coming up on 22 years in September that I've been tattooing makeup. You know, and so a long time, yeah, a long time, and you know, for a, a lot of those years, about fifteen of those years, I was doing body tattooing and permanent makeup, but I ended up with hand issues, right? And I had to put down the machine for almost four months. I I couldn't even hardly do per- permanent makeup. I mean, I was supposed to not do any PMU, any ta- any tattooing, any PMU, anything for four months, but that was a little difficult to do. I did not do the body tattooing. Um, you also weren't using a rotary machine at that time. I right? was using the coil. Coil. So uh, yeah, yeah my, I had to go to a hand doctor, a specialist, and um, remember he had me bring in my machine and yes. set it up uh-huh. and and tattoo X-ray like on, on latex thumb. and yeah, yeah and all that stuff. So I did take some time off, and but. Um, but went right back at it. Mm-hmm. Not so much with the body tattooing, because um, that can still aggravate my hand because they tend to be longer sessions. But definitely didn't didn't really skip a beat. Not too much with the PMU. So I'm coming up on 22 years. Wow, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And I just did an eyeliner this morning on that great lady. I had you come in and meet her. Uh-huh. Yeah, she oh, happened, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Wow. She happened to be a lesbian, and it was great. Right. I love it when I when I hop it. Not that I don't love my straight ladies, right? but you know, but yeah. So it, it was kind of cute, and um, to have a, a, a lesbian in there, and uh, so I asked her. I said, so, well, she said, you have been Googled. I did my research. You have been Googled. I said, oh, I've been Googled. Uh, uh, this is funny. Yeah. Okay. She, no, she was a who. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, well, wh- so what did you discover? Uh-huh. And she's like, well, I discovered that you're the shit when it comes to eyeliner. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And she goes, not that many people do it, you know, here in Vegas, first of all. She goes, but um, yeah, you're definitely the eyeliner girl, you know. So, and she, she, she booked eyeliner. And I'm like, great, 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 great. And she goes, and I saw that you had a good team and the way you interact, you know, with team. She goes, so I felt like I got a good idea of who you were. Made her comfortable. Personally, yeah. yeah, made her comfortable. And she goes, but, um, you know, you could have been an asshole with eyeliner that I've I'd still, <laughs> still, she'd still come because she still wanted, come. To, she wanted I, a good eyeliner. I want a good eyeliner, yeah. And so anyway, um, so I said, so we get talking and, you know, we're, 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 we're bonding. Mm-hmm. And so I asked her, because I'm always curious. So I asked her, I go, so uh, when you Googled me, you know, when you're watching, you know, wa- you know, following me and, you know, learning about me and whatnot, I go, did you know that I was gay? <laughs> <laughs> I wondered where this was going. <laughs> I mean, do I look gay? Did, were you like, oh, she's gay you know Mm -hmm. or (laughs) because sometimes you and i do that we're like oh yeah she's totally gay Mm -hmm. you know or you know we're out you know a waiter oh he's totally gay i mean sometimes we can totally tell right Mm -hmm. no one ever knows you're gay you're a lesbian no No. one ever knows ever knows no ever knows so with me 
you know, I think I look queer. I think I look gay. Or a tom, tom, tomboyish. Tom, tommy girl, we call it. Tommy girl, we call it. Right. So I, uh, so, but, but I do always get curious. I think my older ladies, I do a lot of older ladies now in my career, in their 60s, 70s, you know, 80s. And no, they never know. They don't know. No. And I think it's just that generation. Right. That, that it doesn't really dawn on them or mm-hmm. they don't know the signs. <laughs> right or maybe they don't have any lesbian friends or, yeah or, or, who knows? a lot of them probably don't have any lesbian friends yeah, they but, might but who yeah. knows but anyway but the but, but you know so anyway so i asked her i said so you know did you know i was gay <laughs> and she was like uh yeah <laughs> it was funny <laughs> just like that and i'm like oh okay it was so funny yeah i'm like oh okay i said yeah my wife tells me that i look gay <laughs> she started laughing she goes oh yeah i could definitely tell you tell you were gay she goes oh, but funny. i'm gay so <laughs> you know we got that gay dar um so anyway yeah so and her wife is a little tomboy tommy boy so mm-hmm. she was more feminine mm-hmm. like like you a little more feminine a little more girly and you know, and her 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 girl. She's, she's a her, cute lady. She was very cute. She's been with her honey eight years. Yeah. So, yeah. So that that was a that was a fun way to start start my day today. And the eyeliner came out, um, man, super sick. Came out really great. You gonna post pictures of it? Yeah, I'm gonna post it. Yeah, I got a little picture of. I like. I have this new thing that I like to. Get, I like to get them all cleaned up, and then have them lay there. Me and Olivia do it, mm-hmm. and have them lay there with their eyes closed. And then, and I and I, I, I do a video, and I say, okay, open. And then they open their eye, and they look up. And it's just cool. So I'm collecting. It's it's like a like an open, like a blink. Mm-hmm. And I'm collecting all these blinks. Yeah, I got like, I think I got four or five blinks now. Uh-huh. It's just super cool. Like all these different eyes, and they just open, open, open. Yeah. It's like a series? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's like, uh, yeah, it's going to be like a series of blinks uh-huh. or eye openings after a freshly done eyeliner so that's what i'm working on so i think that would be look super cool so anyway okay so let's get back to i think i got a little off track Mm -hmm. but let's get back to our topic um so the so how to have a good long career and i think that's a great question i think that's a great great question and so let's talk about that um my advice on having a good long career i think first and foremost is the learning training and knowledge Mm -hmm. that that should be acquired by by the technician by the artist i think that's first and foremost you have to train you have to train in this and um, and continually train and continually train mm-hmm. absolutely continually train mm-hmm. it's not one and done no it's a- a- absolutely not one and done especially you know um you know w- you know some of these classes are you know three days long or some of the classes are they're they're a five-day class or a week class it's not like body the body tattoo industry where uh, it's extremely difficult to get an apprenticeship, and if you do get one, I mean, you're there anywhere from one to two years uh, apprenticing, mm-hmm. you know, and, and learning and, and all that stuff. I mean, it's, 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 it's super in-depth, and it's, and it's really long, and, and those apprenticeships are hard to get. Our industry is different. Training is on every corner, and mm-hmm. you just got to have money. Right. And you can buy training. Most of the training in our industry is subpar, mm. right? Yeah, we get uh, a, lot of, a lot of letters, a lot of a lot email, of letters, a lot, lot of emails. Of that's probably our most. Yeah, uh, probably that's probably what dominates. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's heartbreaking. Our messages mm-hmm. and emails and DMs is poor training, mm-hmm. right? Just got one late last night, and we're setting her up with Amy to do two or three days hands-on powder brows because mm-hmm. our training was so bad. Um, well, she'll be so happy now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think training. So if you uh, started out in a three-day class and, you know, you like it and you want to continue on, then, you know, you have to you have to go find really good training, hands-on training, and you have to keep putting yourself into these training classes. And it can get expensive. Training, you know, is, is expensive, especially, you know, with, you know, good trainers, Um 
training can you know they they can be upwards of you know two two to four thousand dollars for a two or three day you know hands-on class but it's usually very worth it because you put that into yourself yeah it, it's worth it if you pick the right trainer mm -hmm. i mean you know so my advice is to find um you know artists on instagram follow artists on instagram or facebook um you know that are doing really really good work mm -hmm. in the area you want to learn i think all pmu artists should probably start out with brows learning uh and and mastering, mastering. Mm -hmm. eyebrows because that's our number one most requested mm -hmm. procedure right is eyebrows so I, you know my advice would be to start out with eyebrows to try to learn eyebrows eyeliner and lips in three days a week or you know even a couple of months you know, that's kind of crazy, man. That's it's a lot to That's to a do. lot to do, you know, because eyeliner, th I mean, that ain't no joke, man. Right. Eyeliners are hard. Yeah. And they're complicated. And, and they're the second most requested procedure. Uh, that is the second most requested procedure. So you want to be really good at you it. You want to be really good at it. You know, my entire career, I've done almost as many eyeliners as I have eyebrows. And lips is the l least requested procedure. They s In the last... Uh, of the three. Of the three, yeah. yeah. In the last two or three years, they certainly have gotten more popular. You and mm -hmm. I have seen this. Um, but they're still the least requested procedure of the three, mm -hmm. eyebrow, eyeliner, lips. So I would suggest everybody, you know, focus on eyebrows. And, you know, whether you want to do hair strokes uh, or, you know, uh, powder brow, classic powder brow, ombre, um it's good to learn and know, you know, all the styles. Mm -hmm. But pick a style to start out with, master mm -hmm. that style, offer it, and then go do some additional classes. Or you don't have to. Like, I don't do hair strokes. Right. You know, I spent a lot of years doing hair strokes. And just over the years, it just, I ended up like fizzling them out. They're just not my jam. Mm -hmm. I did a really good hair stroke, but I didn't enjoy them. Mm -hmm. Like, they didn't bring me joy doing them and like they do mary like they do mary yeah. mary richardson yeah. i mean she, oh my, loves. she loves doing she's hair strokes fantastic. she's fantastic at them you know and i think i would i think i would compare it i think my problem mm -hmm. was i would compare the longevity of a hair stroke eyebrow to a powder brow mm -hmm. and the powder brows you know last longer and they're just they work on all skin types even the most challenging and the oily and so I was doing more of them, and and I probably got better at powder brows. I probably mm -hmm. evolved uh, more in the area of you know powder brow, ombre brow, you know classic powder brow, solid brow than I did hair strokes. And so I just kind of ran with the powder brow, the machine powder brow, and that's what I enjoy. So you don't have to learn all styles of an eyebrow. If you like Mary, Mary only does. Uh, machine hair strokes she's mm -hmm. is doing a little uh you know micro shading now here and there but she's predominantly hair stroke right you know some people are only micro yeah. yeah and then some people are only powder brows so that's okay you know or you can be you know versatile and and offer uh multiple different styles you know just mm -hmm. just depends on you but training 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 and you know to add on to that not just training like skill wise, mm -hmm. like, you know, um, how to execute the, the procedure, but the knowledge, I mean, I mean, you know, what do we use in all our procedures? Pigments. Right. So I think, I think it's really important that you learn all about pigments. You learn about iron oxides and organics and titanium. You know, when to use an organic, when when it's going to be more I ideal or beneficial to you to use an iron oxide. It'll um, just make you a better artist. Yeah, it's going to make you a, a, a better artist. It's going to make you a smarter artist. Yes. Right? And, and so, and, you know, we experience all the time so many artists, you know, want the knowledge mm -hmm. you know they want the science of pigments they want to learn needles they put the time in they read they study you know they take you know the online courses and 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 they really want to learn uh but just as many that that want to learn and are ready to learn don't want to learn right 
They just don't want to learn. learn. They don't want to take the time. Or they don't want to take the time. Put the energy into it, yeah. Put the energy into it. And I, I just have a hard time, like, really understanding that. But the ones that do want to learn should take your color theory. Because <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, all Even I learned. And I don't tattoo, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's presented in a way where it's 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 entertaining. It's it's yeah, it's not boring because you're entertaining. <laughs> well, you know, you can't like you can't be drab, you know. And and you know, in color theory, you know, I'm talk. Uh, you know, a big portion of that class is the science of pigments. It's all science based and 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 factual. Mm -hmm. It's not my opinion. This particular right. part of it, right? right. And um, so it's all about iron oxides and, you know, organics and particle size and titanium and, you know, carbon and just so much. Uh, there's just so much to the science of, of pigments that it could get drab. It could get drab right. and it could get boring really quick. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And then they're, and, you know, and, and they're going to sign off and they're not going to absorb. So, yeah, I mean, the tone of your voice, the pace of you know, uh, the, the way you speak, mm -hmm. your, your pacing, analogies. And no, you're really good at making it interesting. It's a little bit like watching a movie. It oh, is. you think? Yeah, I oh. do. <laughs> Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, it's got to be, because you want, you, want you, you want them to stay on the course, and you want them to watch it, read it, learn it. You want them to go back and watch it, read it again, watch it, read it again and again and again until it absorbs. Um, because, you know, then, you know, that's going to be a smarter artist, mm -hmm. you know, that's going to work with better efficiency. They're going to make better choices, mm -hmm. you know, and, and work with efficiency, uh, which, you know, everybody that knows me or follows me, listens to me, they know, you know, the two things that I preach are, um, you know, versatility and efficiency. So the, the knowledge, you know, the theory, you know, in our industry, same with needles, you know, I mean, that, that can be a, a, a little drab and, and, and boring, I guess. But there's a lot of science when it, when it, you know, behind needles. You know, why was a liner, you know, produced? What, is, what was it produced for? What were the shaders produced for? Um, what are each one of them, you know, best at and most efficient at? There's a lot of science there. And some people just don't want to take the time to study or i mean it doesn't even cross their mind about any of that i'm sure but it's really important that knowledge is important yeah yeah so i i think that is um that's that's definitely going to uh help ensure a long good career is good skills and to get good skills and be able to execute the procedures uh, beautifully that takes you know a, a lot of training a lot of practice and um, and then the theory, the knowledge behind the pigments. Why are you choosing this pigment and not that one? The theory and knowledge behind needles, machines, you know, skin, um, wound healing, uh, you know, all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Super important. Super, super important. And what if your client asks you? I know that happens frequently. Your client will ask you these questions, and you it's nice to have an answer. Yeah. And be uh, knowledgeable. Clients ask all the time. And even if my client doesn't ask, I s just start spouting out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I do, like today. Right. Yeah. You know, with this, with this, with my client, you know, what we talked about this morning is, you know, she, she wanted it, her eyeliner to heal, uh, you know, black. And, and she wanted it to, you know, last, you know, a really long, long time. And so, you know, I get out my onyx, mm -hmm. you know, which is an iron oxide from the right. light pigments and which heals really, really black mm -hmm. and stays black, you know, for, you know, a, a good long time in the skin. But I did get out some black diamond, some carbon as well. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, that first, uh, you know. Did she, you layer it? Or? No, I didn't even end up layering it. No, not on her tops because mm -hmm. I, I saw that she had some blood vessels and some capillaries uh. on her lids. Um, and when I went across that, when I got done that first pass, I mean, she, she puffed up. You know, she puffed up a little bit mm -hmm. and, and got, you know, pink. And those capillaries, mm -hmm. um, they puffed up as well. They became, so her eyelid became more textured because... Of, of the capillaries so no way in hell am mm -hmm. i going to use carbon right. on an eyelid like that because you could get a migration so Legs, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i just started going into my spiel about you know carbon and 
versus iron oxide and why I'm not going to use carbon. She's just going, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't know if she understood everything that I said, but she was following along. Like mm -hmm. she was, you know, interested. Like well, she was interested. Mm -hmm. I think that she, she was. She probably was. Yeah. But, um, yes, but to clients, cli you know, the client's getting smarter as well. And so the clients are asking more questions, you know. And, you know, clients see a lot of bad work, you know, on, on social media. So they want to make sure... They want to make sure their artists are, are smart and know their stuff and are skilled and equipped to, you know, do a good procedure on them. So, and and I think all you know, my next point comes to you know, you know, with the training, the, the studying the theory and all the knowledge and learning the craft of PMU inside and out. Learning your craft. Look, if you are going to be a um, uh, 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 I'm, I'm trying to think of a chef. a chef, right? Right. You just can't learn how to crack an egg, put something in a pan, turn on an oven. Well, what kind of chef do you want to be, right? Do well, you want to be an expert chef, right? right? And in and be financially rewarded, right? Mm -hmm. You have to study and learn about foods mm -hmm. and what temperatures to heat certain foods up what and equipment to buy and what equipment to buy i mean there's a lot of theory and a mm -hmm. lot to learn and a lot to study a car mechanic right mm -hmm. i mean no matter what industry you go into it's not just going through the motions and physically doing the job you have to study the theory there's theory um and and that's just as true for the PMU industry, being a PMU, PMU artist. Uh, so I think that would come easy. I would think artists would want to do that um, if they're passionate right. about it, right? Mm -hmm. I am super passionate about the PMU industry. You've so, always been that way. Yeah, well, I, I, just, I just fucking love it, man, so much. And I love what I do, I feel so lucky to be doing it and to be doing it this long and I just got mad respect for the PMU industry it's given so much to me you know I say all the time it, it, it saved my life and and it certainly did in more ways than one mm -hmm. right and, um, and it's just given so much to me that um, I, I'm very very passionate about it and I'm very I'm very grateful for it and that's why you give back a lot that's probably why I give back a lot. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, you want to, like if a person pay it came, forward. you want to pay it forward. If a person came into your life and, and did a lot for you and picked you up when you were down and mm -hmm. brushed you off and was always there for you, you, you want to give back to that person because you're so grateful, you're so thankful, right? You right. want to, and that, that's, it's the same with, you know, with the industry. You know, the industry did that for me. So, um, you know, I want to, I want to do that in a, and I, and I enjoy it. I enjoy, I enjoy mentoring and helping, you know, and mm -hmm. the, and, you know, a good industry is built, you know, you know, one artist at a time, you know, it's right. just the way I look at it. You know, if, if you're mentoring artists and, and helping artists level up, then the industry ends up leveling up, right? Better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. ends up better. So and hopefully they help other yeah. artists once they've yeah. yeah. helped. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So to have a good long career, I think you need to be passionate about it. You need to s be passionate and stay passionate about it. And I understand and I know some artists mm -hmm. that have gotten burnt out. Right. Right. They've lost their passion. Oh, yes. You know, they've been doing it, you know, maybe 10, 12 years. They've lost their passion. They're burnt out. They don't stay with the trends. They. Yeah. You know, and usually someone gets burnt out. It's usually client fatigue. Mm -hmm. You know, it's usually not the work like mm -hmm. actually executing the procedures, like picking up the needle and getting in the skin and doing the work. Usually, usually I think a lot of people burnt out, you know, because clients, you know, client I've heard that a lot. management. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. you get client fatigue. Some, you know, clients can be tough sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, draining, yeah. And, and, and draining. But, you know, we, we certainly have, we certainly have known some people that lost their passion. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I think to have, you know, 22 years uh, in the business, I'm, I'm as passionate, if not more passionate today than I was when I started. Mm -hmm. my, passion, my, my passion for this industry has never died, or dipped, wavered, wavered or nothing. Mm -hmm. No. 
Would you agree? I'd 100% agree. I mean, we even go you on dates. You love, love, love it. I do love it. I mean, you're even like. Oh, I love it too. <laughs> I know, but you have rules. Like we're going to dinner, you know, like tonight, Taryn, like no talking about PMU. No bringing your phone. No bringing your phone. No talking about permanent makeup. No talking about the store. <laughs> Sometimes we still do. I'm but like, yeah, okay, but can we talk about Willow? Because you know, I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got something I got to tell you about Willow. Only if you tell me to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sometimes we have to set boundaries so we have like, you know, romantic time, you know, because we're, we're life partners, not just business partners. So, you know, it can, it can, it can creep over into all aspects of our life and, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. affect, you know, it can, it can be a damper on the makeout session. So, <laughs> you know, we got to <laughs> control it sometimes. But I think that's important. I think it's important to stay passionate. And whatever, whatever um, you need to do, sometimes we have to uh, do things, take action, implement things uh, to refuel, re you know, to reignite our passion. Maybe that's going to a conference. Maybe that's um, going uh, and taking a, a class or a lecture, you know, something like that. You know, whatever, whatever it takes for you. So, you know, if you're someone listening right now and, and you love it, but your, your passion, you know, you're starting to lose your passion, it's important that you keep that passion, mm -hmm. you know, to keep a good long career and, and to stay happy and joyful while you are doing PMU. You know, if you're not passionate about it, then, um, you know, you can, you, you can lose your joy and, and, and you might not make you happy anymore. So you don't want to be doing something that, you, that, you're, that doesn't make you happy. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So you gotta you gotta stay passionate. I think you need to stay curious. Um, mm -hmm. You need mm -hmm. to stay curious, right? I think curious and interested, yeah. and I think that is a huge reason why I'm still here mm -hmm. doing what I do, is because I'm curious by nature, mm -hmm. and I'm super interested in a lot of things. So everything PMU, including the new trends, um, really get me really curious. I'm mm -hmm. super interested. In, I want to learn all about them. Mm -hmm. I want to do them. I want to try them. I, I may not enjoy all of them, right? but um, some of them I do enjoy, the new techniques, the new, new trends going on. I do enjoy. I incorporate that into you know, my work. Some of them... You know, not really my thing, so I'm not really gonna, you know, uh, use it I in my work. But but you have knowledge of it. But oh oh yeah no, I, and I, I have more than knowledge. Like like I do it until mm. I get pretty good at it and I can do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's just me uh -huh. because I want to be able to talk about it. Right. And and when I do go to conferences or end up you know with P you know PMU artists, if that's the technique they do, I can sit and I can have like you know, a knowledgeable conversation with them about it, you know, because, you know, because I was curious and interested, I practiced, I learned all about it. You know, maybe I, you know, took a class, I, I, I practiced it on latex, I did it on some clients. Um, and again, maybe, maybe I, I, I keep using it on clients and, and maybe, maybe I don't, maybe it's not just for me, but um, I know all about it. I did it. I performed it. I, I can speak about it. And, um, so I, I, I like that. I'm I, so now I'm curious. So what's something new you had learned in the recent time that you do incorporate now? That I do, wow, you're catching me off guard, that I do incorporate now. Well, um, the three shader, mm. you know, that was probably about maybe like a year ago, year and a half ago. So, yeah, so that's why you really wanted to include it. Yeah, in the, yeah. The someone, new needles. Yeah, yeah. That, that three shader. I don't even know who mentioned it. Someone was like the three shader. Well, because the single needle hit the scene. Right and so fascinated by it and for, you know I, i'm you know can't wrap my brain around it yet fascinated curious interested mm -hmm. you know what is the big deal about the single needle didn't make sense to me from you know um a logical standpoint mm -hmm. using such a tiny little needle to fill an eyebrow mm -hmm. um it doesn't make logical sense when you're talking you know the dimension of the tip of the needle versus the dimension of like an eight shader right. and efficiency and getting done quicker and time mm -hmm. and time, um, you know, things like that. But it got really super popular and, and, you know, 
the work super popular super popular and the work mm-hmm. looked beautiful so i'm like oh man i oh, man i gotta like check this thing out so yeah i just you know our, my friend na does a single needle and michonne but well but i i taught oh, michonne. michonne yeah and michonne didn't want to learn it at first i know she did not want she was like griping and bitching at me she did not want to learn it but um I was, but i told her no you got to stay relevant you got to keep up with you know the trends you got to at least try them and if you don't like it then that that's fine but you know we got to stay relevant and and stay up with you know we got to evolve with the industry you mm-hmm. know and evolve um now she loves it and she is a single needle she, maniac. She's amazing single yeah. needle artist. Yeah, she look really what I is. look what I did. Yeah, what you, I turned her into. Yeah. So I did, you know, maybe fifteen or twenty clients single needle. And at first, I sucked at it, you know, because I'm used to big shaders. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I wasn't that good at it, and it was a little frustrating. But you know, by my you know fourth, fifth client, you know, now I'm getting the hang of it. I'm getting like a good little rhythm with it, and. Um, and, and you know I you know I like I liked it when the skin was perfect, but the minute you get skin that's oily or challenging, I mean, God, I mean, shoot me now, it was so, so hard, frustrating mm. because it just doesn't get pigment in, and you know, so I, so in experiencing with the single needle, I did learn um, on what skin types that single needle is very good for, mm-hmm. and I can see why people pick it up and use it all day long for eyebrows on certain skin types but on other clients i got that had large pores they were textured super oily um that needle you know it is it is not a good choice it is not efficient doesn't work well at all Mm -hmm. um i would stop the procedure i wouldn't even like uh continue because it was just not happening you know Mm -hmm. i'd have to get out my eight shader shader. Mm -hmm. and then just like that the whole situation changes now i'm getting pigment in the skin and i'm moving on getting the procedure done right. now i'm happy enjoying the procedure again so it's client so I, I did learn a lot but single needle is just not my thing i didn't end up loving it mm-hmm. and so someone mentioned um it might have been not when she was out here filming uh her her uh her class her yeah for for the for online academy, academy. Yeah, yeah she does a shaded powder brow with a single needle. She's also an amazing artist. She's yeah. amazing. Her online class is the bomb. Mm-hmm. And um, she, you know, works at single needle like nobody's business. Just beautiful, beautiful uh, powder brows. But she mentioned the, the three shader, you know, because I said, you know, please don't tell me you sit there and like suffer <laughs> with a single needle, <laughs> you know, when the client is like super oily, oily and yeah. challenged. And she's like, nah, I like three shaders. I'm like, ooh, three shader. Yeah, and I had never used a three shader. The smallest shader I had ever used was a, a five shader. And I use those for most of my eyeliners. So I ordered some DaVinci three shaders, started using them in the bulb area mm-hmm. to get that ombre look and get some pixels going. And here I am digging that three shader. shader. Yeah, so the three That's sh- why you wanted the OMG to have a three That's shader. That's why they, not just one three shader, but two. two. Mm-hmm. I fell in love with that three shader. Yeah. I fell in love with it. Because, you know. I remember you telling me, Kat, we got to get some three shaders. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, and here, and I think I was 20 years into my career mm-hmm. before I picked up and tattooed an eyebrow with a three shader. So you can see, like, 20 years into my career, I, I you know, I'm still curious. I'm interested. Mm-hmm. So I pick up a new needle that I never used before. And, 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 and now, a couple years later, I'm just rocking out the fronts of my bulbs with it. It's a great needle to, uh, to, to do an ombre, get that ombre look. You can definitely get some pixels, you know, uh, you know with, with, with the three shader. Um, you, you're definitely going to get the better, better pixels with a single needle. I mean, that's what that single needle really is. I mean, no one yeah. can match the single needle for producing pixels. But that three shader, I mean, you know. Mm-hmm. she's okay <laughs> she'll give you some pixels yeah and she can like do like you know deliver a nice soft ombre and 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 it's much better much much better choice if that client does have textured oily challenging skin. challenging skin mm-hmm. you know so love the three shader i think staying curious and interested is one of the most important elements of having a good long career and evolving as an artist. If you're not curious, you know, curiosity leads to discovery, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 
uh, discovery leads to experimenting. Mm -hmm. Experimenting can lead to things you never imagined. Right. So I think staying curious, staying passionate, staying curious is, is super important. Super important. And, um, and uh, you know, if a client wants that look, it be it comes in handy because you can you'll be able to do it because you were curious and you yeah. practiced and you mastered it. Yeah. Yeah. So. So three shaders. So I definitely wanted three shaders in the OMG needle mm -hmm. line. We did two, a mm -hmm. 0.25 diameter and a 0 0.30. I, yeah, I don't know if we're sold out. <laughs> no, those 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 are selling really fast. Well. Yeah, because yeah. I've been talking about them a lot for the last couple mm -hmm. of years, you know, in DMs and emails. And because we get a lot of emails that people, they learn on the single needle. And then, you know, six months or a year later, they're out in their studios. And they're and then now they hate the single needle. You know, they're, they're, they're not, they don't know that, it's not that they hate the single needle. They're, they're really frustrated and they're really struggling. They, they need to know there's other choices. They need to know that there's other choices in the single needle, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, and because they've been on a small needle for so long, a single needle, they get afraid to jump up. Yeah, yeah. like an eight shader sounds scary. Like an eight shader yeah. sounds scary. scary. So, but if you bump them up to a three shader, right. that's not so, so scary. scary. And then from a three shader, they can bump up to a five, five. shader. Mm -hmm. From a five shader, they can bump up to, right. you know, an eight shader, seven mm -hmm. or eight shader. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, stay passionate, stay curious, stay interested, experiment uh, with new techniques, new, new needles, new trends, and... Um, You'll you'll be you'll be shocked, you'll be shocked and totally surprised at what you'll discover about yourself and what you'll end up liking, and um, and some of the the new like healed results you can start producing like and and doing, you know I, I I'm I'm excited for the, like the next five years of my career and you know and what discoveries I'm going to make and what new. You know, am, am I going to pick up and you know mm -hmm. start start doing so? Which way the end industry is going to move? In yeah, and in which in which direction the industry is you know uh, going to move? It's all very exciting. It's uh, to me, I find it you know very exciting. Um, ask a lot of questions. You mm -hmm. know, for sure, we've got you know these Facebook boards. We have one, the Girls Inc. Products and Education Board. And we get we get a lot of questions. A lot of questions. It's a support board. We run it pretty strict. We don't mm. allow a lot of drama or any rude people or oh, anything no. like that. Mm -mm. Um, no new, spamming. No, no spamming. Nothing like that. If you're a newbie, um, you know newbies have a lot of questions, mm -hmm. and you know on other boards sometimes they get some shit, you know, uh, for asking basic questions. But hey, you gotta ask fucking questions. You gotta start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere, and maybe that maybe maybe they got really bad training. Mm -hmm. You know, like a lot of people. So what? So if they got really bad training, but they're passionate about this they think maybe they could be good at it they want to give it a give it a go so what they're not supposed to ask mm -hmm. basic how, you know uh -huh. you got to start somewhere you know and, and yeah i mean they thought their beginning and their start was going to be in that class and then that class ended up being you know uh, a crappy class mm -hmm. and then they get you know and four or five thousand dollars later uh, yeah, you know four yeah. or five do days later four or five thousand dollars later you know they don't they know don't know do. what to do they mm -hmm. don't know where to turn they don't even know what's the very first thing they they should do mm -hmm. you know get on get on a board get on the girls inc products and education board and 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 they got they got to be they got to ask basic questions sorry but they do our girls will always support yeah, yeah or you can e you can team. email us i mm -hmm. mean you know um we we answer we answer on there and we answer we email we answer we answer you know, even the most basic of questions oh. that you know yeah lovingly <laughs> absolutely lovingly you know but yeah you got to ask questions yeah i think the only stupid question is the one you're not asking yeah. right i mean mm -hmm. you know you gotta you want to be good you gotta ask a lot of fun questions that's right? just the way you it don't is know what you don't know yeah you don't yeah you don't even know what you don't know so mm -hmm. ask a lot of questions um and then you know in practice 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 mm -hmm. get on practice pads and practice 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 you know a lot a lot, a lot. get control of that machine mm -hmm. get precise with that needle and uh you know work out the shakes the quibbles mm -hmm. and the wobbles and, and and get her going mm -hmm. you gotta practice you gotta mm -hmm. practice so that's like the skill part of it right that's the mm -hmm. skill part of it training you know be a spun seek out knowledge read you know take online classes and and get the theory and, and absorb and learn all aspects 
all elements of, of PMU. Stay passionate, stay curious, stay interested. Um, follow trainers that do really good work mm -hmm. and, and that you respect and, and, and admire. And you know, m maybe those are the trainers that you know sa save save money. And you know, maybe once a year you can go, or every other year you can go do a class. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sometimes you know budgets are tight. I totally get it. So you know, uh, do it do what you can there. So let's get into the other part of having a good long career, right? Because PMU can be hard on our body. Oh yeah, it can be hard on our body. Um, so I think you got to take care of your body, mm -hmm. posture, right? So you got to have good um, posture. I see people all the time, like totally hunched, hunched, like super hunched. Their their back is like rounded out, like a mm -hmm. big hump, and they're all hunched over. And in eight to ten years, they're gonna have shoulder problems, problems neck problems, yeah. all kinds of problems, and. Um, that's not good. That could no. be your career, mm -hmm. man. So posture. You got to sit with like a straight back, back and have super good controlled posture. Sit up straight and, uh, you know, nice straight back. Keep your back, your shoulder, your neck all in alignment. So people are probably listening saying, well, then how do you see I mean, in order to see what I'm doing, I gotta, I gotta hunch over and I gotta get closer to the procedure. That's what I was just thinking. Yeah. Right? So I use eye loops. That's right. right? I use yeah. eye loops every time I post a reel. I mean, they come in. You know, the girls Willow and Olivia come in our rooms and they take little videos for TikTok and mm -hmm. of uh, you know and Instagram of us you know tattooing. And I always have those loops on, so we get a lot of questions. A lot. A lot constant, of questions. Um, yeah. Daily, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. But um, you know, the glass part has my eyeglass prescription. readers prescription and then i've got the the those magnif magnifiers they're loops and they really magnify and they bring the eyeliner to me right i mean it it, mm. it brings it you know close to me it's the same that doctors use in surgeries isn't it that they yeah 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 they're so uh what's the name of the company Did someone look that up designs real quick? for vision designs, designs for, for vision, vision. Designs for vision, and they you can come and measure you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've had my eye loops for five years, and so I'm my reader prescription changed, and I think my magnification after five years needs to be a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. So I just emailed them, and uh, I got this great gal Rebecca, and so she she's going to be in Vegas. Uh, in October. So she's coming out in October mm -hmm. and she's going to remeasure me. And so I'm going to get a brand new pair of loops. I'm going to upgrade my loops. My magnification needs to be a little bit stronger. I've been feeling that for the last like it changed every few though, months. Didn't it, when she changed got those loops? everything mm -hmm. for me, man. It's like it got my posture super good. Um, I can see so clear and defined. It's like it's sick. Like <laughs> how clear and magnified i can see like you can i can see the tip of my needle in every dot of pigment and, and i will i will say that um you know it take it will take you it takes a couple of weeks to get used to working mm -hmm. with loops and, and magnifiers it does take a couple of weeks when you first put them on it's weird uh, it's weird i i got i got a little dizzy i i got some headaches it it, 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 was, it was a little weird mm. and i kept wanting to drop them you know, I kept wanting to take them off. That was, and, but she told me I would I'd want to do that. You're, you're going to want to feel like you want to take so them off. So you were forewarned. Uh -huh. I was forewarned. So I just, I just, and it was probably two weeks. And now I couldn't even imagine my career without them. I, I, I never work without them. Mm -mm, um, I know. Yeah, but mm, that's how I get that. That's how I got that eyeliner so tight and crisp, crisp. Yeah. this morning. Yeah, I love it. So uh, great eye loop company. They have reps in your area. Mm -hmm. They have reps that come out, come to your studio, and they bring you all the different uh, magnif magnifications, like different strengths. And they'll have they'll they'll actually have some. You got to have someone there at your studio with you because you want someone to lay in your procedure bed, right. and they'll have you sit in your stool and kind of position yourself the way you normally do. The way you normally do it. And mm. if you normally tattoo all hunched over, you know, sit up. You're going to sit up. It'll maybe force you to. No, it does force you to. And then, you know, and then try the different magnifications. So with my loops, when I'm working, and I, you know, and I have my loops on, if I bend over, 
it blurs out. Right. I can't see. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It gets super blurry. So I can't bend over and get close to the client. So it keeps your posture straight. The loops yeah. force me to keep good posture. Oh. What's what's the name of the it's uh visions for design. Design, design right. for vision. Design for vision. Yeah. Design for vision. So and they are surgical loops that dentists and doctors use. They they are expensive. I think they're they sixteen, eighteen hundred dollars. They're yeah. expensive. But this is an investment in your eyes, your body. Um, you know, in your career. I mean, lo I think the loops absolutely, without a doubt, extended my career. Mm -hmm. For sure. For absolute sure. Because before my loops... I remember uh, you saying that you don't know if you're going to be able to do eyeliners, right? Yeah. Because your vision had really changed. Yeah, my vision had changed and my readers weren't strong enough. Yeah. And it was like five, six years ago, I mean, I started freaking out. Ah, oh, you remember. You yeah. know, and I was like, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm losing my mojo with my liners, cat. Yes, I don't know. I remember? remember? And it yeah. was freaking me out and something was going on. And uh, then it was Mary Jane Hockey who suggested magnifiers. And I bought some on Amazon and um, then I did a little research and I figured out I, ne I need professional surgical grade Mm -hmm. you know high quality lens mm -hmm. magnifiers and and so i invested in them but i i think they were at like 16 or 1800 dollars. but look i've gotten five years out of them mm -hmm. and how many eyeliners and brows and lips have i done right. so they well they so helped yeah, yeah so those loops uh, i look at it look those loops made me a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> those loops are money makers mm -hmm. that's the way you got to look at it um hand and wrist care right we talked about this a little bit earlier mm -hmm. um i was doing a lot of body tattooing a lot of pmu i was tattooing six days a week 12 10 12 hours a day mm -hmm. going back and forth between body tattoos and pmu and body tattoos and um you know my hand finally hurt so bad i i i, I couldn't even grip my machine you remember all that yes i do it was so bad mm -hmm. i had to go to a hand specialist I remember you talking to Eddie about it too. You yeah, my mentor, mentor, my body tattoo mentor, and uh, he switched to rotary. Yeah, yeah, because I was on a coil machine, mm -hmm. and um, went to a hand doctor, went to a specialist. He had me bring in my coil machine, plug in my machine, and set it up, and do a little tattooing on on latex and X-rays and all that. And uh, so you know, you need to take care of your hand and wrist. Mm -hmm. And carpal tunnel's a thing. For oh, PMU yes. artists. So, uh, you know, for each person, that's going to be a little bit different. You know, mm -hmm. um, it could be wrapping your wrist. It could be uh, hand and wrist exercises. It could be uh, maybe if your hands and wrists are hurting you now, maybe you go uh, get some physical therapy and... Mm, make sure you have a super lightweight machine. I think most people do yeah. now in this day and age. Yeah. But just be sure yeah super lightweight and and a machine that's low in vibration yeah right that's mm -hmm. important if if you have hand issues um but you know if you do have hand issues you you can you can you can do things to to, to help your hand and wrist and mm -hmm. uh, get many more years out of your career but like i said that would go see a physical therapist and uh -huh. learn the the proper exercises because my hand specialist had me doing certain exercises you know, yes, to strengthen mm -hmm. my hand and my wrist. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What are the machines with the lowest vibration? Do you know? Um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, that's why I use the Velcure. Uh, okay. I'm using the Velcure for all my See, eyeliners. I didn't, I didn't know this. Okay. Yeah, Yeah. so the Velcure, I love the Velcure, the Valhalla. The Valhalla has pretty low vibration, too, mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty light. But the Velcure is a little bit lighter and it's got a little less vibration and i i love that valkyr for all my eyeliners it's just it's just been my jam for the like the last year i think uh, the bishop phantom has yeah low. i was gonna ask you, uh, we got an email somebody that has uh, uh, carpal tunnel and she was asking what was the lightest weight machine and i know the phantom is super lightweight yeah too. yeah the the bishop phantom is, is super lightweight the valkyr is super lightweight if only you do hair strokes um, Bell the Bell R is mm. super lightweight, low vibration. Uh, I think nowadays uh, the, the the Rook has medium vibration. Mm -hmm. um, what about like the Zion? The Zion is, you know, I think that's about medium vibration too, about medium vibration. Mm -hmm. You know, because um, low to medium. Look, it, that's really hard to answer, Kat, because everybody's sensitivities level different. are different. Mm -hmm. Like I can hold the Valkyr and say 
that has low vibration to me. To you, hand uh, it to you, and you might you might categorize that as a medium vibration. I could hand it to someone else, and they may, oh no, that oh no, that that's high vibration. Mm. It everybody's just really really different. Yeah, I remember when Mary was switching machines. Um, because she used to use, I don't remember which machine she used to, but it had like no vibration. Yeah, she used one, you know, like an older school digital machine, and I think the Nouveau, and it yeah, had yeah. like zero vibration. vibration. And so, so for her to get on some of the newer rotaries, it was a little bit difficult uh -huh. because all the rotaries have some level of vibration. vibration. So that was a little bit difficult for mm -hmm. her. But she settled on the um, Zion Mini. I the, think was the last yeah. she told me. Well, no, me. she first went to the Bell R. Yes, and, and now. used the Bell R for years, and now she loves the Zion Mini. Is it the Zion Mini or it's the other? Oh mini? no, is it the Flux or the Flux Mini? She loves the Flux Mini. The That's Flux what mini. it is. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, because now you got the you got the regular Zion and the regular Flux. Uh, but now you got the Mini Zion on Mini Which Zion still and great the machines. Mini Flux. Yeah. So they're. Yeah, I mean, they work in the same way, but they're smaller, lighter, less vibration. Right. So I think a lot of people looked at the Flux and the Zion or got it in their hands at our machine class, our hands on machine classes we do here. And it was just, you know, it was just a little bit too big and bulky for them. If you have small hands, you might feel the Zion, the original Zion, the original Flux is a little bit big for your hand, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I thought, I, you know, so but it's you smart. you love them. I mean, you, yeah, you but both of them, so. Yeah, yeah, so smart that they came out with, um, you know, the minis, the mini mm -hmm. Zion, the mini, mini, mini flux. So people with smaller hands prefer lighter machines, you know, they, they prefer the minis. Mm. So, but people with larger hands don't like the minis. I know. You no, know, they like the larger Zion, the larger flux. flux yeah. yeah, so, I mean, we women, we're very particular. <laughs> <laughs> we are. It's not one size fits all. Yeah, I mean, they don't have to do no minis in the body tattoo industry. I mean, <laughs> they think they think know, that's funny. Yeah, you know, they probably think it's funny, but in the PMU, you know, yeah. there's minis, mm -hmm. there's nanos, mm -hmm. you know, there's micros, you know, everything's like smaller, lighter, mm -hmm. micro, nano, mini, you know, mm -hmm. in the in PMU <laughs> industry. Oh, I love it. It's fantastic. That's our industry, Kat. Mm -hmm. That's our industry, but it's fantastic. Um,. So yeah, you know, take care of your your hand and wrist. Um, take care of your eyes. You know, eye strain. If you feel you're straining uh, mm. to see procedures, maybe you need to go have an an uh, an eye exam. Mm. Maybe maybe you should be wearing readers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when I first started wearing readers, I, I probably should have been wearing readers for a whole year. I probably went a whole year thinking, God, my eye strain. I mean, you get headaches, yeah. Yeah, you get little headaches and you feel a little strain, but it doesn't really, you know, you're not immediate, you're not like quick to say, oh, I need readers, you know, I'm going to go get an eye exam. You know, you mm -hmm. let it go for a little while. Right. Um, but in PMU, you can't let that go. So, you know, do regular eye exams because uh, you definitely don't want to be having eye strain and um and again you know the loops if if you're struggling to see or if you have bad posture if you're one of those mm -hmm. that are all hunched over you know we got to get you sitting upright with good posture and loops can do that and take care of the eye strain uh as well okay i think um another thing you know to have a good long uh, pmu career is um rest mm -hmm. rest and diet you know, mm -hmm. uh, taking care of your body, Yeah. you know, um, and not just for PMU, but life in general, to have a good long life. Mm -hmm. You and I, um, yeah, we go out, people probably think um, I'm a big drinker because, you know, we go out once or twice a week mm -hmm. and we go to dinner with our friends and I always take a little uh, Instagram <laughs> yeah. story of uh -huh. my cocktail. And my cocktails. And yeah, uh -huh. but we have one cocktail sometimes with dinner two. sometimes two very seldom can i finish a second one yeah. i'm usually one and then done one and done one and done but sometimes i can get through a half of a second one mm -hmm. but um i love a good vodka martini y you like those mules oh yeah I yeah we both mules. like wine and champagne. champagne yeah i like a little bit sweeter drink but not extremely sweet yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i don't like sweet I don't I, like sweet. Don't speak sweet no, either. but um, you know, and we, we, you know, we'll indulge. We'll order some pizza here and there, sure. and um, but for the most part, I would say, would you? What percent of our diet would you say we're 
healthy and clean. 70%, 80%? 75, 80, yeah. Between 70 and 80, depending, depending on, on if we're... Or if we're on vacation. If we're on vacation or not. So between then we're not good. <laughs> no. Well, we still try to be good. Have salads. Uh, yeah. Have salads and, and be good. But, you know, yeah. we don't eat... One thing we don't eat is we don't eat fast food. No. Now, I haven't eaten fast food since... I don't... It's been over 20 years since I've had any mm. fast... It's probably been 25 years since I've had... I think we had an emergency once and we ate some El Apoyo Loco, but I don't think that that's so bad if you eat the chicken breast. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, think, I don't think I liked it very much. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> don't so, tell El Apoyo Well, that's why we only went once. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm just not a big fast food person. I don't trust, I don't trust the food and the fast food stuff. I don't even know if it's real food. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I know. Huh? I don't know. Where's it going? But, um, you know, I, I think rest, mm -hmm. you know, not overworking yourself... Um, taking time to, you know, spend with your family or friends, do some fun things, um, you know, things like that and, and eating clean, fueling your body. So diet and rest, you know, when, when you're, when you're sleeping good, uh, you're eating good and you're feeling good, you're feeling strong and healthy and, and you're feeling good. You know, I, I think our, our, we perform better, mm -hmm. you know, our work, I think we're more patient, our stress levels are lower. And we're gonna we're gonna execute better. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big believer in um, you know good rest and and taking taking care of our bod taking care of our bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, and then uh, well let me check on the time. Where where are we on time? One hour and six minutes. Wow. All right. So let's do this one last little bullet point, and then we'll wrap okay. it up. All right. Uh, healthy mindset. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's just as important as everything else. Mm -hmm. Everything else. You know, staying positive, and that can be that can be difficult, um, especially like, you know, the way the world is. You know, right now, yeah. the world's a little crazy, mm -hmm. and it can be scary. And so, you know, in the industry itself, you know, you know, sometimes there's you know there's some drama that goes on in the industry sometimes. So, I think having like a positive mindset. Um, Practicing positive affirmations, mm -hmm. uh, surrounding yourself with positive people, um, staying focused on what you're on what you're doing, and not getting distracted and all caught up in what others are doing. Right. Stay Don't within, within your goals and what you want to achieve. Yeah. Right? Don't worry about everybody else. E exactly. Like, why do you think a horse mm -hmm. wears blinders mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. track? Mm -hmm. you know, in the horse racers, mm -hmm. you know, those blinders are put on those horses for a very specific purpose. And that is so that horse cannot see the other horse, the other horses in both lanes. That horse mm -hmm. all stays in its lane, focused on its own lane, straight ahead out the finish line. It's that horse is not distracted by any other horse, super focused. And that's how a horse wins mm -hmm. the race, by uh, staying focused and not getting distracted by everybody around you. And it's easy to get distracted now with social media, oh, yeah. right? Oh, Super yeah. easy to get distracted. Somebody just pushes your button and yeah. Yeah, and you, you want to chime off and you know mm. defend yourself and go after them. But you know, not everything requires or deserves a response right right mm -hmm. so um i don't respond to the it. we, yeah. it's just not worth it and no. it can totally ruin your day and it can ruin your uh your sleep <laughs> your your sleep and yeah. it, it, it can af affect you so uh you know stay positive don't compare yourself to others and um treat people with kindness and and respect i think you know we all have what's called a reputation, right? Mm -hmm. I have a reputation in the industry. You have a, a, a reputation. You know, we all have a reputation. Mm -hmm. People have reputations. And how a person requires that reputation is how that person has treated others over the years. It's not just what that person has accomplished, right? Right. Or how people see you. Or how people see you. It's 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 how that person has engaged with others over the years uh and and treated others over the years that's part of developing the reputation you're going to have as pe and be proud of and be, be proud of and and how people are going to see you yes. right and sometimes mm -hmm. your reputation your reputation 
that precedes you. Precedes you. <laughs> yeah, precedes you. Someone comes to mind. Yes. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, that could be a good thing or, or that could be um, a, a bad thing. Right, not so good. Right. So, you know, just treat people with respect and kindness. Mm -hmm. Stay away from the drama. You know, uh, don't trash talk people, products, mm -hmm. companies, things. Right. Take the high road. Don't worry about what they're doing. Worry about don't what you're doing. Don't worry about yeah. what they're doing. Um, don't steal other people's shit. Don't, right. don't copyright other people's classes and materials. It happens to me all the time. Oh, my God. People will take my lift class, and, you know, a month later, I see a post on their Instagram, and they're verbatim, you know, I mean, yes. you know, they launch it. It's, it, you know, it, but that's just part of the game. You know, I, I deal with it very well, and mm -hmm. I deal with it, um, I've had to learn to deal with it uh, because it's been happening to me for, you know, years and years and years. But um, you're going to get yourself a reputation, you know, uh, create your own right. classes. Um, you know, you can use other people's classes and use other things you see online as uh, inspiration. Right. But don't copy people's stuff because I think that that's like. That's that's the one thing in the industry like people really hate. People will call you out for that mm -hmm. like big time, and that that can hurt your hurt your reputation. And I guess just yeah, you sometimes know, attorneys get involved. It's just can be a whole. Oh thing. yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes oh yeah, people will get attorneys involved. You mm -hmm. can get sued. It, it can be. It can end up being a mess, and it can end up being your worst nightmare. Right. Just because, you know. That person was lazy and felt entitled mm -hmm. to copy someone's hard work, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So, I, and I and I think that's why I've had a good long career mm -hmm. is I've never copyrighted anybody, never stolen anybody's shit, you oh, know? Oh, heck no. Um, <gasps> I treat people with respect. Um, there's a certain grace uh, that I uphold with, with myself and, and others. Um, and you know, and I, I think that's important because I if you're an asshole, you're, you know, you're, you're not going to last that long. Mm -hmm. You know, people figure out really quick, you know, you're a dick. Yeah. <laughs> you're mean. Right. You're this, that, and the other, you know, no if matter how talented, no yeah. matter how talented you are, you know, the people, you know, they, they, they don't want to be around. They don't want to be around you. To you yeah. How many people do we know that were super hot, um, and, and super relevant and at the top of their game, even just five years ago, even just five years ago, mm -hmm. six years ago, seven, we know several mm -hmm. that are no longer you, they're no, you because know, you they're nowhere they to be around. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, and you and I would look at them. They were doing unethical things. Oh, yeah. And they were copywriting people's work, stealing their clothes. They were doing unethical things. They weren't treating people well. And you and I would sit back and go, how can they be so popular? Don't people see them? And you would always say, oh, it will all catch up. Mm -hmm. It will all catch up. It always does. And you're people so right. People are smart. People are smart. People are smart. And people do figure out and, and they, they catch on quickly. And, and that's a good way to not have a good long career, mm -hmm. you know, to get that kind of reputation. So, yeah. So just be a nice person. <laughs> right. Right. Be ethical. a nice person. Yeah. Be ethical. Mm -hmm. Be helpful. Be giving. Be respectful. And, you know, and if someone's, you know, if someone's asking, you know, a question that like annoy, annoys you or if someone's, you know, just don't respond. Yeah. <laughs> you don't feel you have to. Yeah. 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 You don't have to respond. Just don't respond. Mm -hmm. But, um, okay. Is that it? Is that everything? Well, no, we got more, but, oh. you know, I <laughs> don't want to bore our listeners. Yeah. Yeah. We've been here a while. So I didn't, I didn't think we would be talking this long, um, but we can, you know, I'll have you come back and okay. we'll do, we'll, we'll finish it up. Okay. Yeah. And, and talk about some other stuff, but that, that was a lot. Did you guys have any, what do you think about L Livia Willow? I think it's all pretty. Um, I thought it was really interesting, especially the fact, uh, like you mentioned being passionate. I think that that's probably the thing that, that helps people stay relevant. Is mm -hmm. you can tell that they're passionate, and you can tell when they stop being passionate. Passionate. You you think yeah you can tell Willow. I think so. I think you can tell when it becomes more like fake, mm -hmm. and they're just doing it because they have to. 
and they don't love it anymore. Right. Like it's just a means to, you know, make income. They're just going through the motions and it's just a means to make income. Yeah. And, you know, and when you're out seeking classes and learning um, and trying to evolve yourself as an artist, you know, whether it's your skills, your knowledge or all of it, um, you want to learn from someone that's passionate. Mm-hmm. You know, has has a great deal of love and, and passion for the industry, as well as being no, knowledgeable and skillful. But you you want, I mean, because that's that's energy. Mm-hmm. That that passionate energy is is contagious, right? Mm-hmm. And that that can really spark a fire in somebody. Oh, for sure. You know, for for sure. You know, and and I I, I, I like that. You know, I, I I like I like the opportunity to, to uh, spark a fire. I see in that somebody. a lot in your classes because of the way you are as a teacher as a trainer yeah then these and people come and they see it and then they feel it and it yeah. just inspires them yeah well i'm animated my, yeah. my my tone goes up and down and i'm animated and, and they're get, excited to learn yeah yeah and i'm excited which gets them really excited mm-hmm. and gets them really engaging i it doesn't take long when the students walk in they're all like super nervous to, to meet me right <laughs> they all get really super nervous which is really cute and really funny and you know i don't get it it's just me but yeah they, but they do i know i don't right? get it either I know, right? It's like I'm like this big fucking dork, but anyway, but what they do, but you know, within 15 minutes, they're calm. They right? realize, yeah, after 15 minutes with us, you know, me and us, my team. I mean, they're super calm. They got their feet up on the couch. They're, like, yeah. They, I mean, they're relaxed. Yeah. They they know they're in a safe, comfortable space with, um, you know, good friendly people that you know are super excited about the day ahead of us the mm-hmm. class ahead of us so i love that i love that so i love teaching classes so yay all right so yeah and then you know you want to take some girls inc classes with me or marshawn or amy or you know maybe you know go to the girls inc website we got a training calendar and we do post our classes uh there but okay so let's wrap this up. Thanks for hanging out for me today. You paying for dinner tonight? No, you're paying for I'm dinner. I'm paying today. for dinner. <laughs> That's your bribe. <laughs> That's my bribe. Okay. Do you want to? Uh, I, I I I try to uh, end each podcast with like a little quote. Okay. So you mentioned the quote today. Oh. You want to okay. do the quote? No, you do it. Come on, do no. the quote. No, I don't remember it. <laughs> you don't remember it? <laughs> Terrible. It's a Marilyn Monroe quote. You know, and it's hanging on our Give wall. a girl a pair of shoes. No, give the girl the right pair of shoes. Oh, see, you know <laughs> it. <laughs> You're correcting me. Give a girl the right pair of shoes. And what's the rest of it? I don't remember. <laughs> she'll conquer the world. Oh, she'll conquer the world. It's your favorite quote. Well, it's, it's in our bathroom at work. Yeah. <laughs> And there's a picture of Converse, and there's a picture of stilettos, and it's adorable. <laughs> yeah, well, because you, you wear stilettos, I wear Converse. So, yeah, Marilyn Monroe coined this phrase, give a girl the right pair of shoes, and she will conquer the world. Right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. So, all right. So, hit the shoe stores this Labor, uh, oh, it's, yeah, Labor Day <laughs> labor weekend. Day. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be Labor Day when... <laughs> <laughs> when they listen to the podcast. I didn't want to mention Labor Day, <laughs> damn it, because it kind of time stamps, you know. Right, right. But all right, it's Labor Day, Labor Day weekend. So some good sales on shoes. <laughs> mm. I hope you picked up a few. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Uh, this Tatter of Fact, we will see you next time. <laughs>